possible water lines in the walls. But at that point, in her right hand, the dowsing rod did a total 360 twice. And that's just a freaky old chair that was on the third floor. We all got an eerie feeling just by looking at the chair, because it was the only chair on the third floor up there by itself. Didn't Stephanie sit in that chair? No, but it sort of felt like someone had been sitting there, and it was all by itself, all alone, and it was odd because the rest of the whole floor had been completely cleaned out. Yeah, except for that old freaky chair. <laughs> That's a picture of my brother-in-law up in the balcony, and at this point, the equipment is going off, and he's looking around, and I'm wondering if it has anything to do with those two orbs up here. This uh, is another one where the equipment's going off. There appears to be a bright flash and trail of something attaching itself to Pat. And up here you can see the exit sign reflecting from that wall right there in the glass. But up, up above it you'll notice a hot pink orb haze of something. And then next to it a bright white haze of something. The Majestic is very active. We got a lot of these <coughs> bright solid blue orbs or a polygon shaped type orb floating around on the stage. Now at this point the lights are off on the stage, but somehow Flash did this bizarre performance for us. Now this is interesting. There's a story about this walkway in the Majestic where people will be sitting there watching uh, plays or watching rehearsals and they will notice an old man in a long black coat with a top hat walking down this aisle, but not sloping down where the, the floor sets down, where the floor used to extend out all the way to the stage. He'll continue to walk in that same fashion, hovering above the floor the way it is now. So I'm wondering if, by chance, this being taken no more than three seconds after this, if that might be him doing that same walk. And the neat thing about that picture was it was taken in an auditorium that was completely dark. We just leaned in and snapped it, and that came out. We were lights out at this point. <coughs> this is uh, another image that captured my attention. Stephanie, my sister-in-law, took this picture in the dressing room. The mirror is sitting on its side, and when she took this, there's the atmospheric haze again, and you can clearly see the upper torso of a male shoulders, collar folded over, and black head, and almost like either no shirt or a dark undershirt, standing directly in front of her. This is another one of those strange things like what attached itself to uh, Kristen's leg earlier. That one was dangling on the pole. It's almost like they're ghost worms or something. Yet again, more ghost worms. That one is attached to Donnie's leg. This is in the same room with that strange dimensional crack appear on the floor. <coughs> and there it is again. At this point, uh, you'll see Donnie looking at his equipment because it's going off, and I have my head <coughs> standing with uh, my wife's wearing the Ohio jacket. We're looking down because the equipment's going off, and every time it goes off, a photo is snapped, and these abnormalities show up in them. This was an image that was submitted to me from a co-worker of my mother-in-law, and it was on a camera where there were minimal pictures taken. It was on an SD card, and she was flipping through to see what she could delete to make more room, and she found that image. Now, her mother died about two or four years before this image was appeared on her camera, but her mother did not die in the house. However, before her mom died, years before her mom died, she grew up in this house. And there were strange occurrences, like a little boy who would visit them, or a young man, as they would say. Uh, he had blonde hair, blue eyes, and he looked almost like, the best way to describe it would be like the father from Little House on the Prairie, the same type of clothing, the same type of hair, but blonde hair. And the neat thing about that picture was that there, there was no man in that picture. That is completely a ghost image of a ghost face. It wasn't Maybe. a picture taken of anyone. Basically, the picture took itself. Phantom photography. This is in the old theater in Marietta, Ohio. 
I'm just attributing all of these orbs to dust particles because the place was very dusty and dirty and dank inside. And you can look closely enough at that one and see, almost see the rings I was describing to you earlier, the rings to look out for that, that will automatically qualify it as just a dust particle. But this one appears to have either the characteristics of a moisture droplet or possibly a solid mass. And that one's open-ended. I'm, I'm still intrigued by that image, but I would just honestly pass it off as a moisture droplet. Yet again, the book I showed you earlier goes from coast to coast. The book that started it all for us. This is what put me on the map. And Paranormal Chronicles, of course, I've got copies up here. Goes from coast to coast, too. It's available now. The DVD documentary featuring my team, my ugly mug. And this is the calendar of events for what remains in 2009. October of 2009, of course, presentations and book signings, Waverly, Chillicothe, and Washington. Courthouse, uh, online webcast through the Bob Speakman Show, investigation and documentary filming the Canal House in Chillicothe, Ohio, interview with Ohio Magazine in March of 2010, but I was notified in October that I'll be interviewed, so I just went and threw that in for now. Second annual historical ghost walk tour of Chillicothe, that's October the 25th, that's a Sunday. Our television debut, we're actually going to do a show. It's uh, public access on Horizon View, Channel 11 out of Chillicothe. I don't know if Horizon View is available up here, but it will be available in November on YouTube uh, to watch that episode. Uh, it's Scariest Places in Ross County. We've been selected for that by the Bob Speakman Show. He wants to do that episode. And December the 12th, we will be touring the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina. November 09 through January. 2010, I take a holiday hiatus between Thanksgiving and New Year's. And 2010, our plans for next year. We uh, would like to do the Mansfield Prison, if I could talk my wife into it. We would like to do the Waverly Hills Sanitarium in Louisville, Kentucky, if, well, <laughs> the riches in Athens, Ohio. I'd like to do the whole darn town. A follow-up is scheduled for May in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Uh, we plan to close the case on Elizabeth's grave in Chillicothe. And when I say close the case, basically, I'd like to get all researchers and paranormal enthusiasts on the same page as to what the real story is behind Elizabeth. Uh, researching the history of the serpent mounds that were at one time located in downtown Chillicothe prior to the age of conservation. And exploring the mysteries behind the Adena Mansion in Chillicothe, 